welcome Swarthmore community, students, faculty, and I hope we manage to have some board members in the audience tonight. But actually, SWAT community, you may be in the minority because tonight, students from over 70 schools have joined us this weekend at SWAT for a convergence on fossil fuel divestment. Which is pretty exciting. Hey, I'm Becca. Uh, I'm a senior at Brown, and I'm so happy to be emceeing with Alexa tonight. Um, I had an amazing day, and I hope that you guys did too. Um, I was honored to facilitate a panel on immigrant and economic justice, and it was just phenomenal to see how many important links there are with our movements and the movements around us, and the necessity of learning from the past and moving forward in coalition. So thanks to everyone who really really thought a lot today and really participated and the movement visioning was great this afternoon and I really look forward to moving forward with all of you. So welcome and thank you. And my name is Alexa. I'm a senior here at Swarthmore, member of Swarthmore Mountain Justice. And I spent the day mostly building art for a really exciting action we have tomorrow to really conclude the weekend um, that we've had. And you should all check it out. Everyone's welcome to participate. 2 p.m. tomorrow in the amphitheater or in case of inclement weather, the Science Center Commons. So I just want to remind you guys that we are really part of making history today. Like this weekend is unprecedented. This is the first time that the National Fossil Fuel Divestment Movement has gathered together. So I just want to give us all a round of applause. So thank you for being here. Uh, to kick off tonight, we're really honored to have a Swarthmore spoken word poet here tonight. So please give Noel Quinones a round of applause for his performance that he's about to do. Hey guys. <laughs> uh, so my name is Noah Quinones. Um, I'm representing Oasis, our art spoken in soul. It's the um, spoken word poetry group on campus. Uh, so they asked me to do a few spoken word pieces for you guys. I'm going to do three pieces. Um, I apologize. I don't have any pieces about divestment. Um, they said that was they said that was okay. Um, so I'm going to just uh, share some things about justice, about growing up, about equality that I think have some nice parallels. So. <laughs> Uh, so this first piece is called Vitamin C. Imagine a bright, clammy-skinned, pudgy orange with a little brown stem sticking up from the top. A middle school supernova. I brought the morning stuff deep in my back pockets every day I walked to school. The explosive padding of my bright orange North Face winter jacket made all the kids cover their eyes because the sun only wanted to reflect my unrhyming color. Yet every kid took in a daily dose of vitamin C, and the C stands for contradiction. Like, ever notice how orange juice isn't actually orange, it's yellow. How Jersey Shore residents aren't actually yellow, they're tanned. How Sammy Sosa went from tanned to bland. So I decided to take up the mantle of misunderstanding. Sporting a bright orange Yankees baseball cap, wondering why everyone always thought I was rooting for the Mets. I was rooting for color. Discussing it at length within the bellies of middle school, middle school cafeterias and between slurps of water fountain hysteria. Where is the orange Power Ranger? I know Fox Kids has been hiding him from me for years, and I swear when I find him, I'm gonna go mighty morphin' on his... And Noel's parents think he needs a color intervention. I had MC Hammer Pants for any destination, funky town or otherwise. The summer of seventh grade, I took two paintbrushes to the walls of my new bedroom and made love to the orange Fanta girl until our masterpiece covered every piece of white wall. I was promised an orange Ferrari the day I graduated from high school. Scribbled the signature orange boy on every birthday card I ever wrote, and I still pick out the orange Skittles first because my grandmother said orange meant contaminated, and I like to live life on the risky edge, hanging off the curve of every single C in the C stands for confusion. Like, 
Why orange? Of all the colors in the rainbow, or kid, do you rainbow dance that all too happy step between the color lines you colorblind until I realized that the C stands from conundrum of a childhood? Sitting down between two parents who couldn't see each other without you, no lost leprechauns are towing the tigers to help them, so you had to be as bright as you could be until you really realized that the C stands for calling attention to any kid who needed a direction, so I decided to make mine a lighted pathway until I finally realized that the C really stands for community. For Garfield and Patty Mayonnaise, for any kid drowning to find Nemo or bouncing to reach Tigger, any girl looking for a clue with Velma, and any boy looking for courage with Naruto, anyone still trying to explore the world outside the playpen with Chucky, or still cloaked under Kenny's hoodie, I am there with you. Within the brightest color of the sun, we choose our favorite colors like we do our passions, unstitch them from the hanging threads of our souls and weave them for the world to see because some days we all just want to shine. Thanks. So I was to lighten the mood, now we're getting a little serious. <laughs> it's usually how it works. But yeah. Uh, so, apologize for the paper. It's a new piece. Um, I usually like to memorize. So this is my second piece, and uh, this is called Thumb Wars. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war. Five, six, seven, eight, try to keep your thumb straight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, how paranoia scares itself. My thumbs are soldiers of paranoia have taught me everything I need to know about the evolution of war from disdain to fair game to a misunderstanding of safety behind bulletproof nothing. Our thumbs are survivors of evolutionary paranoia. From the opposability stages of our very biology, they say our thumbs construction preceded walking. A testament to our need to grasp our surroundings before we ever decide to explore things we need to travel to, our thumbs are survivors of a paranoid past. That's why we make peace treaties with them. From the first time my best friend made us cut our thumbs open and share blood, and the only thing my paranoid elementary school mind could process was that he had just touched a girl's hand, and I was going to have cooties for the rest of my life to the last time a year ago. When she asked me to make a promise by licking my thumb and putting it against hers, the United Nations should be ashamed at how much time they spend on things that can be solved with spit and paper cuts. The history of thumb wars have come from baby mouth battlegrounds with adults suffering from PTSD as they awake 60 years old with a thumb cradled above their tongue. I call that comfort. No wonder our thumbs wave desperation on the sides of highways because they are baffled at why they are used to travel from changing evolution to becoming a symbol for hitchhiking, call it comfort. Our thumbs, their own roadmaps of paranoia, as I walked into my doctor's office with an infected oozing thumb, and he said, just take a bobby pin, sanitize it, and stick it in there, you big baby. Sometimes we're too paranoid about the things that don't matter. So stop searching for words within the flesh and just kiss the flesh. Everyone wishes to lift the skin, but I still write before ever exposing anything. Expose everything. Put your genetic material on your thumb. Stick it into someone else's. Prove we have evolved regardless of the paranoia of our past. Grasp and just hold on. Thank you. And uh, before I do my last piece, um, I just, I obviously seen everything you guys have been doing, everything that's been going on on campus, and it's just utterly amazing. And I just want to say thank you a lot for inviting me to this. And uh, just off of the main topic, I think, of this event, dialogue and starting that, um, don't forget that I will be here. I would love to talk to you guys about poetry or otherwise. Um, people tend to forget that <laughs> I like to talk about these things. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so this last piece is called Remember. I am the last elephant. Hear my thoughts. A memory spanning the lands of two continents. I know the Ivory Coast like a trunk supporting the weight of 800,000 dead historians. 
The way my mammoth ancestors made libraries from their skeletons, a 10 million volume strong archive buried in Siberia, waiting for someone mindful enough to unearth an extinction of knowledgeable creatures. I stand four legs of majestic archaeology, but all you see are two curved spears for a jeweler's cracked economy. See, I have been known to demonstrate self-awareness upon seeing myself in the mirror. This means I recognize decay within the simplest of wrinkles upon my flesh and still smell the poacher's neck constricting my tendons, forcing me to fall upon a ground long tenderized by my footsteps. We have one of the strongest memories of any animal on the planet. I remember it all, the, ex the destruction of homeland and extinction of ancestors, then the use of our bodies as labels for political domination, how humans use us to reinvigorate their own memories, I remember. If I am a Latino, hear my knowledge of memories spanning the lands of millions. I know my past by the American history textbooks that so readily forget it. A voice supporting the weight of over 500,000 Mexican Americans either forced or pressured to leave the United States. A skin adjusting to the experimental radiation treatment performed on Pedro Albizu Campos, but an eye for the rising importance of the Latino vote. We want to be remembered too. I will not be your last poet. Hear my words. A vocabulary spanning a vast array of metaphor, we seek to transcribe the memories and weave them into a shared history. Elephants have no natural predators except for the humans who are causing their extinction. They have one of the most exceptional memories of any animal on the planet. They remember human faces, yet we cannot even remember our own ancestors. A story. Last year, I met a poet from upstate New York at the Bowery Poets Cafe who told me, all stories are ours to retell. We simply need to hear and understand them. Be my poet today. Take my story from the collection of a writer with the memory of an elephant and an ancestry from beyond American borders and share it with anyone who will listen. Thank you. <laughs> 